been joined by Council Member Price and Council Member Bloomingfield. We have a quorum present. So we will start off with a multiple agenda item comment cards. Uh, this is an opportunity for those individuals wishing to speak on more than one item. And we have no cards at this time. Oh, we do have cards at this time. Just came in for general public comment. Okay, we do those at the end of the meeting. So uh, general public comment, we do those at the end of the meeting. Okay, so we'll get started with the meeting. And if we could go through the consent items first. Also been joined by Council Member Englander. On the consent items, item number three, we will approve with the following language. Uh, we move to authorize the director of planning or de designee to execute 25 Mills Act historical property contracts between the city and the property owners identified in the planning department report dated September 11, 2017 and attached to council file number 17-1062. We approve that on consent without objection. Item number four, we will approve with amendment. My staff has consulted with the Department of Building and Safety and regarding the schedule for benchmarking report compliance. We'd like to make an amendment to section 91.9108.1.1 and section 91.9108.12 to replace November 1, 2017 with December 1st, 2017. Mr. Chair? Yes. On, on, on that item, I just had a question to ask them. Okay, and one of these actually, okay, go, go ahead. Should I do that now or when well, we should do that. Oh, should we, let me hold that then. I'll hold item It'll four. It'll be a quick question, but yeah, okay. That'd be yeah, great. Let, let me hold that, yeah. Item seven, we have no cards. Yeah, we do have cards, so we'll hold that as well. Item nine, we could approve and consent. Item 10, we could approve on consent. Item 11, we could approve on consent. And we've been joined by Council Member Marquis Harris Dawson. Item 12, we will continue to November 17th. Item 13th, we will continue to a date uncertain. Item 14, we will continue to November 17th as well. Any objections to any of those items? Okay, if we could go back to item Council. four. And if we could call that to order, Mr. Mejia. Um, did you act on item seven, Councilman? No, we did not act on item seven. Sorry. Oh, so item four, Councilman, this is a report from the city attorney. It's a city attorney prepared ordinance to make technical amendments to the building code. Oh, October, okay. Thank you. Mr. Blumenfield, you had a... Um... Yeah, just, just a question. I mean, I, I was looking at this, and, and, all, and all the technical amendments sound, seem fine. Um, but I'm thinking about it in light of, of something I'm working on with the... Um, after the Da Vinci fire, trying to change the code with the, the four story. And I'm, I'm trying to understand why we're, why some, some of these items have to be done in the building code or, or have to be, we're very reluctant to make changes beyond the, um, the state requirements and what the criteria is for doing, for making those decisions. I don't know if there's someone who could speak to that in terms of when we do these things by you know, simply by, by a technical fix versus sometimes when we want to do, go a little extra level like on the making, a, trying to create parity for a, a multifamily structure like a, versus a commercial structure when it comes to wood framing. Is there someone here from staff, uh, particularly uh, building and safety, who can answer this? Someone here for building and safety? No? And I don't want to hold up the item, so I can take that question 
okay. directly to them, and I'm happy to approve the item, but I thought I would use the opportunity if it was possible, but if, if it's not, I'm okay with uh, moving forward. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bloomfield. There's still an opportunity between now and city council hearing. Um, so, okay. We will approve this item with uh, the amendment to changes to the section to replace November 1, 2017 with December 1, 2017. So, so the city attorney will need to include those amendments in the updated ordinance, Councilman. Okay, we will do Before that. Before it goes to council. Okay. Thank you. We'll approve item number four as amended without objection. Item seven, if you could call that to order, please. Sure. Um, item seven, Councilman, this is a report from the Planning Commission. It's a general plan amendment and a, an appeal filed by Laura Alfalo. Um, it's relating to the underlying action of a disapproval of a zone change on a, the property located on Hamill Road. Okay. Staff here on this item? <coughs> you could briefly present on this item, please. Yes, the item before you is a general plan amendment and zone change, as was mentioned. The recommendation from planning staff and the City Planning Commission was to deny the project. Our understanding was that uh, the appeal may have been withdrawn. Oh, okay. Yes, it has. So, we are going to receive and uh, receive and file this I item because the appeal will has been withdrawn. Um, I do have some speaker cards on this, so let me go through the speaker cards and then we will. But um, we have four comment cards. Uh, the intent at this time is to receive and file this item since the appeal has been withdrawn. Uh, City Attorney, do we still move forward with comment cards? Terry Kaufman, Messia City Attorney's Office. Um, I know that, that the appeal's been withdrawn, uh, both of them, but I wasn't sure about the timing of it, of whether or not they met the code requirements. So it might be better to just take an action and if it's the, um, committee's inclination to deny the appeals rather than okay. receive and file. And in that case, then it would be appropriate to take comments. Okay. Uh, and maybe Chair, maybe uh, Ms. Bonson could just maybe just do a brief explanation of the project for the uh, benefit of the public who may speak. There's appeals and there's also other application requests. So by withdrawing the appeals, does this mean that the project is um, being withdrawn in its entirety, or there may be some confusion because there's some appeals and then there's, um, I believe, applications for zone changes. Citywide Planning Commission um, took an action on July 23rd, 2015 to disapprove the requested general plan amendment to the Wilshire Community Plan um, to change a footnote referencing the project site as follows. Development of the properties bound by Burton Way to the north, Arnaz Drive to the west, Hamill Road to the east, and Colgate Avenue to the south shall uh, be permitted as a high medium density development limited to the maximum floor area ratio of three to one. They also disapproved um, a zone change from R3-1-0 to QR4-1-0 and disapproved an adjustment, site plan review, um, as well as adopted the findings of denial. And they did not adopt the mitigated negative declaration. The applicant uh, appealed the denial of all of these entitlements. And I believe they requested a withdrawal of the appeal um, the last week of August. So, so maybe if so. we can just put it more simply, the applicant had a, 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 applica a package of a series of applications they put forward to propose a development in right. this area, and they've withdrawn those applications. Therefore, that proposed development would it's no longer well. The denial of the commission would stand. Right. 
So just to be clear about what happens to the development, I, I'm sorry, just, I feel there's people, in the, members of the public who just need to be clear about this. The application goes, the applications go away. Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we'll go to public comment now. John Harris, Yakov Bensui, Bensel, Lucy Bradley, and <laughs> Sandy Weiner. You each have, uh, is it one minute or two minutes? One minute? One minute, one minute to speak. Thank you. Welcome. How you doing? All uh, good afternoon. My name is John Harris Hamill Road. Um, we just ask that you do the right thing and uh, just stop this project once and for all. To stop harassing the uh, people who live here, who have to take off time from work, etc., to come down here all the time to these meetings. So, uh, thank you very much. Bye. Good afternoon, Yakov Ben Tzvi. I'm unclear as to what action has been taken here. Can staff explain, please? Well, uh, and there's a letter from the applicant saying that the appeal has been withdrawn. So is it withdrawn or not? Yeah. Can uh, you hold this time and can the staff explain one more time the procedure as to what's before us and how we got here? Okay, yes. So this application is gone, yes? One second. They'll explain it. Thank the you. reason, uh, this is Shauna Bonson with the planning department. The reason that we're hearing speaker comments and hearing the item is an appeal was filed, but the question was with the timing. Um, so the applicant has requested a project and that includes a general plan amendment and a zone change and other entitlements. Uh, the item had been continued um, and was scheduled for plum. Um, and now the applicant who had requested an appeal and did not agree with the City Planning Commission's recommendation for denial um, has withdrawn their appeal. That is our understanding. But due to the timing, it's better to hear everyone's comments and have the Plum uh, Committee make a decision. So the project is denied. I see. No so as far as I'm concerned, this item is gone. Done. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Go, go ahead. I'm just Sandy Weiner. Yep. I've watched construction in the area. Igress and egress is horrible on a two-lane street in a residential area. 180 cars doesn't work out. Do the right thing. Thank you very much. Lucy Bradley. I'm going to read what I read a couple years ago out in Van Nuys. I think it's obvious that the construction of a high density high population complex on this little side street will reduce the quality of life for the 100 plus people who signed the petition back in 2015. Our neighborhood has a small town feel to it. Perhaps it's because the multi-unit buildings take up only one block west to east with single family residences south to Wilshire. Perhaps it's because with the exception of Willimon, all north-south streets are not thoroughfares. They virtually dead end at Burton Way. Kids play out in front of homes. Individuals and couples walk in the evening with no fear, either from cars or other problems. The neighborhood now is a healthy, balanced, and quiet with an appropriate scale. Hamill is not 3rd Street across from the Grove. It's not 6th Street, a busy thoroughfare for crosstown traffic. The question is, do the many people here uh, who live here have the right to continue with high quality of living uh, that we have either bought into or purchased with rent, or does one entity, because it would be benefit financially, have the right to disrupt the quality of life for its own profit. Thank you. So to effectuate the intent of the appeal being withdrawn, what is the correct motion here? To deny the appeal, Councilman. So we'll deny the appeal. Okay, so. You're supporting the, uh, you're denying the project. Right. And denying the appeal. Yes. Any objections to that? I see no objections. So ordered. Thank you. All right. So that gets us to item number one, the report from the Director of Planning, Mr. Vince Bartoni. Uh, thank you, Chair Weezer and members of the Planning and Land Use Management Committee of the City Council. Um, just one item is we're doing our ongoing effort to update our, comprehensively update our citywide general plan. Um, that has multiple elements that cover um, many issues such as land use, mobility, um, public health and, and safety, and amongst many others. Um, we're updating it as um, portions at a time. We're updating it, the first part of it that we're, we're, we're working on is our open space element. So um, 
we're doing a series of outreaches, really the beginning of the process. So we're going to be doing four public outreach, four kind of series of, of, of meetings uh, throughout the city to get input uh, from various members of the community in terms of what should be in our open space element. And um, our first one will be October 2nd in West LA, then we'll be, which is a Monday, then we'll be on Saturday, October 7th in the Valley, uh, Saturday, October 21st in South LA, and Wednesday, October 25th in East LA. Um, we encourage everyone to attend and participate. You can find out more information from this on our rla2040.org, that's O-U-R-R-L-A-2040.org. Um, and we'll be giving you updates as we go along as, as this process will be a multi-year process. Uh, with that, that concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, not a question, just a, just a positive comment, which is I wanted to, to tell Vince and the planning team they were out in, and let folks know they were out in the forest this weekend at the Reseda Art Walk dealing with the community plan and, and I was really pleased to see the, the kind of feedback they were getting and it wasn't just the usual crowd, it was really a diversity of folks and I think going to events like that as part of the community plan outreach makes a lot of sense and this was a great example of, of uh, successfully doing that. So keep up the good work on that front and, and thank you. Uh, thank you, I just add Craig Weber is in the audience as our principal trainer planner overseeing that effort. He's been very active in trying to do as much uh, creative outreach as possible. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Craig. Thank you. Any other questions on this? Okay, we have one public comment card. Herman. Mr. President, Regarding the planning use of ongoing development, 42 USC gives me the discretion and the opinion to say fuck you because you didn't take public comment last time I was here. Remember, fuck you. Because all I wanted to do was engage on the policies of development and the zoning, folks. Zoning. But the motherfucker said, no programs for you, no conditions for you. And worst thing to mention was I only spoke for one fucking minute. Development's important after all. We have hepatitis A, as in ah in your language, you ESL bastard, so that we can remove CDC. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll receive and file item number one. Item number two, if you could read that into the record, please, Mr. Mejia. Uh, item two, Councilman, this is a motion, Blumenfield Wizar. It's instructing planning and the city attorney uh, to report back on an implementation plan relative to the issue of businesses that sell uh, motor vehicle fuel and beer and wine for off-site consumption. Hey, Mr. Blumenfield. Great. I know, I'm thrilled that, that we're, this motion is, is moving. Um, I just want to request that it come back to committee as soon as possible. My understanding is it's actually the report is done. We just have to go through this procedurally to, to get you to bring this process to get you to bring the motion forward. So um, I'm eager to get it addressed. Um, issues of mixing alcohol and driving uh, is a dangerous mix. And so I just want to make sure you guys get that report since, especially since it's done, back to us so we can hear it as soon as possible. Thank you. We'll get that scheduled as soon as this goes through the procedure. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Any objections to approving this item? Seeing none, so ordered. Okay. Item number eight. Item eight, Councilman, this is a uh, report from the South Valley APC. It's an ordinance, it's a zone change for a 12-unit apartment building located in CD3. Welcome. Good afternoon, council members. Um, my name is Will Hewen with the Department of City Planning. I will be very brief. The proposed project located at 18367 West Hatteras Street is for the construction of a new 12-unit apartment structure. The project is subject to J Measure JJJ and was previously scheduled for PLUM um, was removed and the applicant has now revised the site plan to indicate JJJ compliance. 
as such now, the project proposes restricting one unit to very low income households and one unit to low income households. To effectuate this project, in addition, the applicant requests a zone change from the existing RA-1 zone to the TQRD 1.5-1 zone. The South Valley Area Planning Commission and the Department of City Planning recommend adoption of this zone change request and approval of the project as conditioned in the staff recommendation reports conditions of approval. Before you are the revised Exhibit A mentioned and the revised conditions of approval. Um, changes to Exhibit A include the addition of six um, additional parking stalls for a total of 30 stalls. Um, and of course the designation of one unit for very low income households and one unit for low income households. Changes to the conditions of approval include addition of language related to Measure JJJ requiring um, uh, those units designated as well as the labor practices and other requirements of the JJJ um, uh, initiative. Um, I'm available for any further questions if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have one public comment card on this item and then we'll go to Mr. Blumenfield. Um, Wayne from Encino. so much. So we're having in the name of the Jewish Days of Atonement sustain the appeal please. We're, we're, we're begging to your proper Hebrew context to deny this fucking project and leave the people in peace. You have to do that as a matter of atonement. Yes. Yom Kippur requires that CD3 take this project and fuck this project. Just this one time. One time, I know. Everybody paid off the councilman, yes? Yes. Did everybody pay off the building inspector? Yes, we did. Okay, well, just for today, justice will prevail. The project must be denied. Otherwise... Bob Blumenfield will burn in hell if he doesn't do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Uh, I guess I'm going to burn on this one. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to recommend that we uh, move the report from the South Valley APC with the, the recommendations that they made. Okay, we'll uh, move. Uh, Mr. Blumenfield moves to approve uh, uh, and adopt uh, with revised conditions. Any objections to that? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Item number five, please. Item five, Councilman, this is a report from the Planning Commission. It's a general plan amendment and an update to the San Pedro Community Plan. Welcome. Good afternoon, Council members. My name is Connie Polini Tipton. I'm with the Department of City Planning, and today I'm proud to present the San Pedro Community Plan for your consideration. This represents another milestone that reflects the city's commitment to dedicate resources to community plan updates. Similar to the West Adams Community Plan that was most recently adopted, and Silmer and Granada Hills Community Plans, the San Pedro Plan is the guide for how the city manages the development and preservation of its neighborhoods. These plans establish goals and policies for land use, integrate the latest thinking on mobility, health, housing, and sustainability, and these are all in um, consistency with the city's adopted plans. These plans also strive to reflect the community's vision and be user-friendly. The 35 community plans collectively make up the city's land use element of the general plan. While the general plan sets out the long-range vision and guide for future development, the community plans provide the specific neighborhood level details, relevant policies, and implementation strategies necessary to achieve the general plan objectives. Today, along with the policy document, the council is asked to consider the plan update and concurrent zone changes and general plan amendments, as well as a new overlay referred to as the San Pedro Community Plan Implementation Overlay, or CPIO, 
which is a zoning tool that provides <coughs> supplemental development, design, and use regulations tailored specifically for San Pedro. I'm going to invite Esther Maya to describe the plan features and provide more detail for your consideration. Uh, but first, I would like to recognize a few key staff um, who have contributed to the plan and who are not um, here or who are not here at the table with us. Uh, Priya Mahendale is the community planner, the city planner, uh, supervising this plan, and she's providing another civic duty today by doing jury duty, so she's not here to present with us. I'd also like to um, acknowledge that uh, senior city planner Debbie Lawrence is in the audience, and she has um, been a participant in developing the recommendations over um, several years, so we'd like to recognize her contributions, as well as our GIS and graphics staff who help us uh, implement the plans and make them technically um, possible, as well as our city attorney team. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Esther. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Esther Maya with the Department of City Planning. Presented to you is a comprehensive update to the San Pedro Community Plan, which was last revised in 1999. San Pedro is located on the Palos Verdes Peninsula in the southernmost portion of the city of Los Angeles, adjacent to the Pacific Ocean and the Port of Los Angeles. The San Pedro Community Plan presents a long-range vision for a community of approximately 80,000 residents, as well as the implementation tools necessary that carry out the vision upon adoption. The vision for San Pedro is a stable community that provides a high quality of life for its residents, one that built upon its distinct natural beauty, rich cultural heritage, and proximity to the Port of Los Angeles and the waterfront, all while retaining the community's small town feel for, mul for multiple generations of San Pedrans. Downtown San Pedro is envisioned as a compact and walkable center of commerce, entertainment, and cultural activities, with connections to the significant investments in the Los Angeles waterfront by the Port of Los Angeles. The plan update would encourage the greatest amount of investment potential in the downtown in terms of uses, heights, and square footage permitted through its various implementation tools. The plan update proposes development standards that support functional, well-designed, and economically vibrant entryways and commercial corridors, such as along Harbor Boulevard and Gaffey Street, one of the city's great streets. The proximity of San Pedro to the Port of Los Angeles waterfront highlights the need for a seamless connection between the downtown and the popular regional destination. Requirements for, this, requirements for active ground floors and accessible open spaces in the downtown strive to accomplish this. Industrial land in San Pedro, while limited in area, provide opportunities to support maritime and other local industries. The plan update supports clean industrial development by providing high and FAR incentives for clean and green tech businesses. San Pedro is marked by stable residential neighborhoods, as well as coastal bluffs, lush hillsides, and park spaces. The plan update protects these stable single-family neighborhoods and open spaces by preserving land use designations and zones in those areas and focusing investment instead in the commercial areas. The San Pedro Community Plan update includes goals and policies for land use, and the Community Plan Implementation Overlay, a zoning tool, helps to implement these policies. The new CPIO will regulate neighborhood scale, enhance the appearance and function of commercial corridors, facilitate the development of housing in the downtown and adjacent commercial corridors, accommodate increased pedestrian amenities and connections to the waterfront, and incentivize clean and green tech industries. These regulations seek to produce well-designed new development, amenities that contribute to a high quality of life, revitalize commercial and industrial areas, and protections for historic resources. The Downtown San Pedro Community Design Overlay is folded into the CPIO as design guidelines and thus repealed with this update. Similarly, the CRA design guidelines are integrated into the CPIO where appropriate as a part of an effort to reduce layers of regulation into a single document. This plan is a reflection of community input we have gathered over numerous outreach events. 
we receive feedback from residents, businesses, and other stakeholders, as well as from the CRA Citizens Advisory Committee, the Neighborhood Councils, and the Port of Los Angeles. With support of Council District 15, we were also able to work closely with the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, Caltrans, SCAG, and stakeholders on both sides of the city boundary on a grant-funded streetscape strategy consistent with the goals of the San Pedro Community Plan. I want to thank the community members in San Pedro, including the Northwest, Central, and Coastal San Pedro Neighborhood Councils, Council District 15, and city planning staff who have participated in the development of this plan. <clears throat> Along with the requested actions in the determination letter, we recommend that City Council request the City Attorney to prepare the ordinances for form and legality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work on this, um, to the planning team for uh, getting this before us. We know it takes quite a bit of work and a lot of community engagement. Uh, we'll go to Nate Holmes, Council District 15. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Nate Holmes, and I'm here on behalf of Councilman Buscaino, Council District 15. We are very excited about the San Pedro Community Plan update before us today. This document, by and large, preserves what deserves preservation in San Pedro. It accommodates change where change is most welcome. And most importantly, it allows San Pedro to grow into the future while retaining its historic character. Now, given the long path that the community plan update has traveled, it is tempting to look at analogies like scaling mountains or completing marathons, but uh, I don't think those analogies are quite accurate. I think a more apt symbol for this plan you have before us today is a bottle of fine wine, all right? Yes, this plan spent a few more years in the cellar than we anticipated, but during that time, it matured and now has a richer character, which means that before us today, we have an ultimately better plan. And what do we mean by that? Well, planning staff sees the opportunity to add items like the Western Avenue corridor street enhancement strategy. We now have a Measure J comprehensive assessment, as well as other surgical amendments that make this an even more robust vision for the San Pedro community. So on that note, let me thank, uh, excuse me, let me conclude by thanking planning staff and the city attorneys whose work has brought us here today. Your efforts are greatly appreciated by the council office and the people of San Pedro. And I'm going to curtail my remarks at this point because the time is ripe for us to open this perfectly aged bottle. The councilman respectfully asks that the honorable Plum Committee members approve this plan and that we go full speed ahead so we can put it into action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, are there any questions from the committee? Mr. Blumenfield. Sir, and, and this is great and congratulations to all of you on, on making this happen. I'm curious though, it took a while um, and eight years and we, ha we now are in the situation where we're requiring the six year cycle uh, when we have to move on a lot of plans simultaneously. So I guess what I'm asking, planning about this is, you know, what are some of the lessons learned here in terms of outreach and policy that we can apply now to the move as we move forward to these, to the other plans and there's several going on in my district that or, or are there things that we should look at as folks who are undergoing some of these other plans as to what happened here that might help inform us how to be better uh, on the plans that are moving forward? Uh, that's a great question, Craig Weber, City Planning Staff. Really a lot of the thinking that you were describing in terms of how to bolster the community plan program, make it more efficient, and build upon lessons learned um, has been integrated into the community plan moving forward. So there were a few key things that really stood out to us over the last couple of years as it was apparent that many of these community plans were taking too long. One of those was to bolster our, our current process to write community plan environmental impact reports and to work more collaboratively with the Office of the City Attorney. And so we've also uh, looked at ways to help fund that office to augment their resources so that there's a more functional team able to get into all of the very detailed issues and analysis that, that are within the environmental impact reports. Um, the preparation, and in this case, um, overhaul of the San Pedro EIR over the last couple of years was one of the, one of the larger um, areas of time spent in plan preparation. Um, 
Some of the other lessons learned have to do with grouping plans geographically so that there are some economies of scale with respect to doing outreach, with respect to preparing a more regionally focused environmental impact report. So that, that level of thinking is something that we have rolled out in the Southwest Valley where we're doing those three plans contiguously. Um, but with respect to the outreach process itself and the development of the plan concepts, um, there was actually a relatively straightforward process in the preparation of the San Pedro Community Plan. Unfortunately, those other facets, um, oh, one other, one other item there actually is the resources on the planning side to complete these. So um, when this plan effort was initiated, there was really a single staff and a part-time manager for the plan effort. Um, what council approved in its budget for the 16-17 and then the 17-18 fiscal years was a significant expansion of community of teams of staff to commu complete these community plans so that we have um, an appropriate level of resources to do outreach, to write the plans, to do the EIRs, and so on. If I could just maybe add just a little bit to that, Councilmember Blumenfield. As Mr. Weber has gone through, largely the lessons learned here was about providing the resources, the staffing. It was more of the technical side of things because of just the matter of we just didn't have the funding and the resources. So I think the city's come a long way where I think we're having, we're providing the right, the right amount of um, both staffing and funding for it. And we've solved, through this effort, we've solved a lot of the technical issues. Now what we didn't have as much on this one was as far of a disagreement amongst the community in terms of what should be in the plan. So it was less about the community consensus, more about the technical end. We think we've really resolved the technical issues um, for it, for this. And along the way, as we've resolved the technical issues, we've been trying to fold in a new way of doing the public outreach. Um, so the lessons learned here were more on the technical side than the community consensus side, because we had, uh, as opposed to many parts of the city, we had actually fairly good um, consensus compared to the rest of the city in this area. Maybe on the, on the technical side, help if you could explain the community plan implementation overlay component, how it cleans up our code and how is it different than the old tools like the queue conditions and the community design overlays? Sure, so the community plan implementation overlay is really, in this case, an amalgamation of several existing regulatory tools as well as the creation of new regulations. So in the current San Pedro plan, there are a number of different queue conditions scattered throughout the plan, developed at different points in time. Um, the CPIO consolidates many of those regulations and puts them into a single place. Um, the CPIO also um, pulls together existing CRA regulations as well as design guidelines that were part of the, the San Pedro community design overlay. So it takes these various layers of zoning and overlay regulations and puts them in a single place. Um, one of the other unique features of the CPIO versus other overlay planning tools that have been developed in the past is that it envisions an administrative review process for projects that comply with the CPIO regulations so that um, the review of projects that are doing the right thing is more straightforward. Projects are not caught up in lengthy appeal processes and so on. So will applicants still need to do zone changes or much less likely? Uh, the intent is that that would be much less likely, yes. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So we will, uh, any other questions? Seeing none, we will uh, approve this. And Councilman, uh, also the city attorney needs to be requested to prepare the ordinance. Okay, we'll request the city attorney to prepare the ordinance. Any objections? So seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Um, just as a point of interjection, the, the, the city attorney has felt it needs to be clear that the council will actually be requesting that the city attorney prepare the ordinance so that Plum, as a committee, is not making that recommendation so much as council would. Okay, does that, but this is going to council for right. approval, so right? it'll be embedded yeah. in the committee report. Yeah, okay. That recommendation. Excellent, thank you very much. So ordered, thank you. Thanks again for all your work. Item number six. <clears throat> the next item, Councilman, is item six. It's a City Planning Commission general, general plan amendment. Um, this relates 
to the construction of an, uh, rather, the continued use of an, of an existing single family home in CD5. Good afternoon, committee members, Craig Weber, city planning staff. So this item is a council initiated general plan amendment to a single roughly 6,000 square foot lot fronting uh, Midvale Avenue near the corner of Midvale and National. Um, and the request is to change the land use designation from medium residential to low residential. And this change of the land use designation would actually make the designation consistent with the existing zoning on the parcel, which currently is R1. So there's a zoning and land use pattern north and south on Midvale Avenue of low residential and R1. And then there's a zoning and land use pattern on national of medium and residential. Um, and the two parcels closest to the corner have ended up with a mishmash instead of um, that medium land use designation but an R1 zone. So the request here is to change the land use designation, making the property consistent with its single family neighbors to the north. Okay. We will um, go to public comment. Faisal Alsari, from Council District 5. Council members, good afternoon. Uh, Faisal Alsari on behalf of Council Member Paul Koretz. Uh, we urge you today to move forward with correcting this land use designation and down plan this, uh, this lot. I'd like to read a letter from Council Member Koretz explaining the action uh, for the record. Honorable, uh, honorable Council members, over the last few years, the city has enacted policies to protect single family homes. We have implemented into law the baseline mentionization ordinance as well as a variety of R1 variation zones meant to preserve character of communities and allow for growth uh, through community consensus. The City Council has committed and dedicated a funding source to update the city's community plans which are critical to providing complementary land use and zoning framework in Los Angeles. As we update our community plans, residents will have opportunities to better shape land use policies that work for each unique neighborhood and address any non-complementary issues in the plans. Today before your committee is an action to correct an error uh, in a land use designation, my office has received several requests from the Westwood Garden Civic Association comprised of over 620 single family homes as well as a majority of neighbors on Midvale Avenue requesting the city correct a medium density designation on a block of all single family homes. These requests predate my time in office as a council member. And while the city updates uh, the community plans, um, which will provide opportunities to correct such matters, we should not force neighborhoods to wait on such obvious requests. The unique nature of this request has been documented on the record with the planning department. Among other issues, there is no alley separating this parcel from the single family homes, which is the standard of land use planning between multifamily and single family uses. In this case, the current designation would allow for a seven unit apartment building next door to a single family home. Uh, the height difference also substantially contradicts the city's general plan framework, which encourages protecting the character and preservation of single family neighborhoods. I therefore ask for your support and approval of a general plan amendment uh, to the West Los Angeles community plan to redesignate this parcel from medium to low residential. Thank you. Okay. So with that, we will, um, any questions or comments? Seeing none, we will, oh, we will approve the GPA, correct? No, Councilman, the, the recommendation from CPC was a disapproval. So your, so your option is either to overturn the underlying action of the CPC or to sustain it. Okay, we're looking to overturn the CPC recommendation as requested by CD5. And I, additionally, I think you will need to request um, planning to prepare a revised resolution. And we will request them to prepare a revised resolution. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. 
Now we are go to general public comment. Omar Perik, Zach Strasters, by one one minute each. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Hope you're having a great day. In every generation, there's one word that transcends culture, gender, economic status, and education. That word's hope. Hope says I'm somewhere in my future where I look much better than I look right now. Hope is a fruit of progress. Hope is a fruit of opportunity. And hope is a fruit of intentional leadership. As a senior pastor of a thriving church here in Los Angeles, hope is the greatest of all messages. And I'm excited that the oil industry would partner with the city of Los Angeles by providing jobs to families in need, opportunity to those that desire a better future, and a hand up for those that dare to dream bigger than their reality. Thank you for allowing me to take a moment of your time. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for keeping hope alive. Thank you. Good afternoon, Councilman. Uh, I'd like to speak a little bit about um, what's taking place with the shutting down of, of oil or the attempt to shut down oil uh, production. It's 100,000 jobs, and that's pretty significant for our community. I'm a member of a nonprofit organization, and we try desperately every day to find jobs and to place people. And so when I look at the reality of 100,000 jobs removed from our economy in, in the greater Los Angeles County, we realize that's a big problem. David Ige, American politician, said when our, when our economy is truly healthy and everyone rises with the tide of prosperity, then issues such as lack of affordable housing, homelessness, and hunger are greatly diminished. We recognize the sound and the ring of these particular issues because they're ones that plague the city of Los Angeles. So we need to think very carefully about the impact of the removal or the potential removal of 100,000 jobs. I thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Herman and Wayne from Encino. So yes, anytime you lobby for the gas industry, please bring free gas cards so that we will talk in your favor. But we like petrochemical industry, it's a very good thing. The fucking jobs are enormous and they're high paying. See, if Marquise Harris Dawson had a real job, he'd be working at the port or at the refinery instead of this shit here. But 100,000 people can't be councilmen if they lose their jobs. Do we want another 100,000 Jose Weezars? No, of course we don't, no. We need more fucking jobs. More jobs to drive the economy. Woo -woo. And if not, the economy will derail like the train wreck that this fucking city council is. Woo -woo. Thank you. Happy holidays. Well, if it wasn't for the Jewish holidays, we couldn't afford to buy enough housing. It's all about giving and providing for Jews. Housing and more housing under the measure H, H, H. Bitch, bitch, bitch. So as long as we have Jews, we'll always have housing but not for the homeless. Homeless are spreading hepatitis A. Homeless don't have a home to call home because we're putting them in bullshit shelters to spread more disease. CDC. Fuck you, LA, and fuck Plum. Do something for affordable housing. Do something for adequate housing. And in the long, short term, Fuck you, Weezer. So that concludes this meeting. <laughs>